Hi there, this is Kritesh and welcome to Tradewinds YouTube channel. I hope you are at home and safe. Now for a very long time, a lot of our subscriber has been continuously asking me to upload a video on options trading. Now I'm a long term investor and I'm not an expert in options trading. And that's why today I decided to invite someone who has a very good experience in trading in options so that he can walk you through about what exactly is options, how it works and how a beginner can get started in options trading. Now this is something new that I'm doing in this video and if you enjoy it, please hit the like button so that I get to know about it and upload more similar content in future. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Hi Tesh, welcome to Tradewinds YouTube channel. How are you doing today? I'm very good Kritesh. Thank you for having me here. How are you? How are you doing? I'm also doing good. So how's the Corona thing going? Are you safe at home? Yeah, I'm happy and happy at home and quarantine. Still got to work at home also. Oh, okay. So Hitesh, your first time on this channel. Can you give a brief introduction about yourself so that our audience get to know about you? Sure. So Kritesh, I'll start right from the point where I started my trading career. So if people can connect to me easily. I started my Trading from the year 2009 is when I started trading Indian cash equity market. Started with a very basic capital of 1,000 rupees. It might sound small, small, but it was a big amount for a bachelor at that time. So I eventually lost all that money in a span of week to 10 days. But uh, trading interest started getting into me from that time itself. I started reading about it. I started learning about it. And eventually I got exposed to the derivative market of futures and options in the year 2011 is when I started learning about it and I got into that field of learning about futures, options, the various basic nuances and how does it trade. So I got, to, I got into that from that time. And then after my college placement, I got into future first as a derivative trader, where I was trading energy product like throughout my career there. I traded energy for like almost seven to eight years. I traded WTI crude, I traded Brent crude, I traded gas oil, and I traded both futures and options and various strategies which come along with it. So I would say I have about 10 to 12 years experience of trading the this market and I grade very fast and very, very fast in this market. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, the thing is like our audience is a lot interested about options trading. So trading basically is very simple if you want to understand trading, but what are options and what is different about options trading compared to simple in trading? So the basic rationale of trading is the same, whether you trade options or the cash market or the futures market. So what, how is options different is that option is something which derives its value from an underlying asset. Now the underlying asset here could be a security, could be a stock, could be a bond. Let me extend you with an example. Say you have a wedding in your house and you want to buy a certain amount of gold. So you want to buy say 100 grams of gold for the wedding. And the wedding is say after four months. But you are worried about the fact that because of the COVID and all the other factors that the price of gold might go up in future and you might have to pay a little more for it. So you go to a jewelry shop and you just talk to the owner of the jewelry shop saying that I'm willing to freeze the price of the gold for after four months, but I want to freeze at the current price. Now the shop owner is saying that what is my incentive in this? How, why should I do that? So the person is saying that I will give you a certain token money in advance, like, which is like a premium or a fees which you pay to the shop owner saying that this is what I'm going to pay you. So lock in the price for me right now. I'm paying you a certain token. So the owner agrees to it. So they, they take, for example, after four months, there are two cases which can happen here. Either the price of the gold goes up or it stays here or it comes down. If it goes up, you have the option to buy at the current price, which you already freeze up. How can you do that? Because you paid the owner some token money. And say if it comes down, you don't have to just buy at the price which you agreed. You just buy at the existing price that time. You just have to forget the token money which you paid. That's the only loss which you're going to get. Similarly, in options also, you have a right saying that I want to buy a certain asset or a stock or an index also at this price in future. So how do you do that? You just meet the sales seller of the option saying that I want to buy this right from you and we'll pay some token money to you. You just pay, so you pay some token money to him and as and when upon expiry of the contract, if the market goes beyond that, you just buy at the lesser price and sell at the higher price. And say if the market comes down, you don't have to honor the agreement because you've bought the right, not necessarily an obligation. You just let the premium money go up. So there's a very similarity between the, if you give an example of gold market and option market, option gives you the right, not an obligation. Okay, so basically here, let's say if I believe that a stock is going to go at that price and, and after a certain time, so I can give a premium and I can book at that price that after two weeks or a month period of time, 
I will buy that stock at that price only. So even if it goes higher yeah, price than that, I can buy at that price. At that price, and you pocket the difference. Say, if you take take for example, if you had bought a stock of Reliance Industries, hmm. and you bought, you want to say that okay, in ten in twenty days time, I want to buy the stock at fourteen hundred rupees, hmm. and you pay a certain token money of say twenty rupees for it. Now, after twenty days, if the Reliance is trading at fourteen fifty, so you make a fifty rupees profit there. Say at fourteen hundred minus fifteen, fourteen fifty, and plus you even deduct that twenty rupees premium also, you still make thirty rupees on it. And say if the reliance trades below fourteen hundred rupees, you just don't have to honor the agreement. You just let the premium money go away. You just don't make any other losses. Okay, in this case, we lose the twenty rupees, but we do not have to buy stock for fourteen hundred rupees. Exactly. You just the maximum loss for you is the premium only, nothing much. Okay, that's an interesting point. And uh, how exactly are like people uh, trading here? I have heard about options buyers and options savers. So who exactly are those? There are basically two types of options, which is call option or the put options. Now, what happens in call option is it gives you the right to buy an asset. I give you an example of gold itself. Now, you can choose to buy the gold at a pre-decided price in future. So you have a right to buy that is call option. Similarly, you have a right to sell also. Now, take for example, if you look at the current market scenario right now, your option you are saying that I want to say sell the Nifty index. Right now, because you think there's a weakness in the market, it will still continue the weakness because we haven't found a cure for COVID. So you lock in a price, saying that I want to sell the index at 8500 at the end of the month, and you pay a sell a certain premium for it. Now, say, take for example, if the index goes to say 8000 at the end of the month, so you still have a right to sell 8500, and you can buy at 8000. So you make a profit of 500 points on index. So put options give you the right to sell, and the call options give you the right to buy. And regarding the question of who is the seller of an option, who is the buyer of option, the buyer of option who is one is the one who is willing to buy the right to buy or sell. The seller is the person who is pocketing the premium and is giving you the right to buy or sell. Okay, if we go back to the previous example of Reliance Industries, and let's say currently it's trading at rupees twelve fifty, and we want to do options in this one. So, and we believe that the price can go how high to rupees fourteen hundred. So, what strategy or what are the things that we can do here right now? So, to to explain you this point, say take for example, Reliance is trading at twelve fifty, and you have a view that it can go to fourteen hundred in like a fifteen days time or twenty days time. So, what you do is you simply go to the options market, which is like an online option market itself on the NSC website. So, you just see the price. Okay, for a fourteen hundred rupees, I how much can you have to pay to the option seller? Now, as the if you see the difference between the current price and the future price which you are willing to buy, there's a difference of one fifty rupees. So you go to the option seller, tell him that I want to express my view, and I have a view that Reliance will be trading at fourteen hundred rupees in fifteen days time. I want to buy that right to be able to buy Reliance at fourteen hundred in one month time. You go to the other side or the other part of the options, the option seller here, tell them I'm going to pay you premium. You give me this right. So that is how you can express a view of buying Reliance at fourteen hundred in one month time. And if say Reliance goes to fifteen hundred, fifteen fifty, you make a profit of one fifty rupees right away there. And if Reliance stays below fourteen hundred, doesn't go beyond fourteen hundred, you just stand to lose the premium money. Okay, so isn't it profitable if we choose a price closer to the current share price? Let's say if it's trading at twelve fifty and we buy for thirteen hundred, it can easily. It is always profitable. And above the price, it will be our premium, our profit. It is always advisable to be closer to your current price because it gives you a better chance of making money out of it. If you choose too far from it, then the chances of making money into it becomes very less for you. Also, the premium will be lesser you have to pay because it's very far from the current price. But the chances of money is becoming better once you are very close to a spot price, which is the current price of the industry. If you had bought, say, call option of say thirteen hundred rupees for Reliance, the Reliance reaching thirteen hundred has a better chance than the Reliance reaching fourteen hundred because of mathematical probability also. Okay. And next is how exactly do we decide the time frame? Like uh, you said, this stock should reach this price at which time? So how exactly it works? So options have their own expiry periods. Now each and like if you take for example stock options, they have expiry. They have a monthly cycle, and the monthly options expire every the last Thursday of the month. And in case in case of Nifty or index like a bank Nifty or a Nifty, you have weekly options and monthly options there also. So you have twelve weekly options running and three monthly options running simultaneously, and every option expires on the last Thursday of the week or the last Thursday of the month. 
So let's say if I want to buy Reliance shares, uh, I have a view of it for rupees thirteen hundred something. So okay. for that, how to decide what is the expiry date? So take for example, if we take today's date, today is the twentieth of the month, and for this month contract of option, it will expire on the last Thursday of this month. And if you have a view for two months right now, you're saying it will reach only after thirty days at that price of thirteen hundred. You buy the next month expiry of options. So and take, uh, and will expire on around 27, 28. I will have 27, 28. Say so only eight, seven or eight trading days left for you. So the time to expire is less. But if you have a view of 20 days, you're saying that after 20 days, I feel the reliance will go to 1300. So you buy the next month expiry contract. And say, if you exam, if for example, you have a view, say after two months, I feel reliance will go to 1300 or 1350. You month, you buy an expiry which is after two months. So you have three expiries playing simultaneously. Okay, so I have the liberty to choose whether I want to exactly. buy for this month or next month or after that month. Okay, so by now I think we have understood about the options and expiry. But what about the profits that the people can make? What are the maximum profit or how much profit money that people can make from trading in options? So you have to look at it from the perspective of both option buy and option seller. I'll come to the option buyer's perspective first. Now the maximum loss for an option buy here is to the premium which is paid. If the contract doesn't go to his desired price, he just stands to lose the premium. But the maximum profit for him is practically limitless. Take for example, the case of Reliance itself. You had bought an option of 1300 rupees for this month's expiry. Now, if we get some good news in the market or something positive comes about Reliance and the Reliance price goes up to say 15, 15, four days time. So you make 250 rupees on your 1300 option. So that's a maximum, that's a unlimited, that's like an exponential return on your investment. So if it goes you to pay you will make a profit of 700. You make a difference of 700. Now from the call, the, the risk here is bigger for the call option, for the call option seller or any, or even the put option seller. The risk is because the maximum profit for him is the premium which you have paid. He can't earn more than, more than that. But for the loss, the profit which could have been made by the option buy could be the loss for the option seller. Say if the reliance goes to 2000, he has to pay you 700 points difference. Okay, and so the, the buyer risk, only has to pay 20 rupees premium, whichever he will lose. 20, 30, whatever the premium is, depending on the time to expiry. If it's a 40 rupees premium also, the maximum loss for him is 40 only. But the potential for him could be 600, 700, 800. It could be any tune the share goes to. Okay, so basically it means that you have a very high chance of making money, or uh, very unlimited potential. And if you are able to get into good trades, the worst that can happen to you is you can lose the premium that you paid initially. Exactly. So I think by now our people have, our audience would have understood the basics about options trading. So anyone who wants to enter options trading or is new to this in this trading, what advice would you like to give them? My simplest advice is to start very small. Don't aim for sky in one trade. It will never happen. It's never happened to me so far. I've tried a couple of times and I failed miserably. So I have learned from trying only. Now, take for example, I'll give you a simple case. If you have a lakh rupee to invest in the market, you say that I'm willing to trade options and want to learn options by investing rupees one lakh in the market. So I would suggest you divide in 10 equal parts at one lakh of 10,000 each. So you have 10 different mistakes to learn from. I'm not saying you're going to lose all 10, one lakh rupee, but you can make mistakes 10 times. You're going to make 10 different mistakes, so there will be 10 different learnings for you. So it's always advisable to go small, divide your money, and earn small, small returns on it. Don't try to build on one trade only. There's no wonder trade in the market. You have to build on small trades and make small money out of it. And you'll learn faster with that. Okay, and one more thing, like what is the minimum amount that you require if you want to get into options trading? Or what is the minimum size of the trades? There is no minimum amount required. You can start with as small as 200, 300, 500 rupees also. Like because if you are buying, say, a call option in the, of the Nifty index by paying a premium one rupee, the value of that one rupee is 75 rupees. One point. So it depends on the amount of premium and the amount of money you're willing to start with. You can start with as small as 500,000 rupees also. You can trade options. And you okay, can go so up to any extent. Between 500 or 1,000 is good enough to start with options trading. Yeah, if you're willing to learn and like, if you're not afraid of losing that 500 rupees to learn to, as a learning cost, you can start with a small amount. But it's always advisable to start with a slightly bigger amount like 5,000, 10,000. So you have different, you can divide the money and learn from it. It's better to do that rather than trading have only more one options, alternatives if you have the bigger amount. Right. And lastly, you have said that you have been trading for a very long time, 10 years up approximately. 
Uh, can you share some of the risks involved in trading or what are the things that you find good about trading or bad about trading? There are potentially a lot of risk in the market. I mean, if I were to tell you about risk, I would revert risk into two aspects again, the monetary risk and the fundamental risk. Now, the monetary risk is you lose all the capital which you put in the market. That is the big monetary risk which you take in the market. You can lose a lot of money in the market. And the other thing is you're not maximizing enough from the trades in the market. If you're supposed to have a right view on the market and your trade is going in your favor, you don't maximize the profit potential on it. That's like the monetary risk. If I were to take the fundamental risk, it could be simple that uh, you're not entering the trade which have conviction. Now, supposedly, if you have a very strong conviction about, say, the example of Reliance itself, and you're not entering into a trade, which means you have lost an opportunity to make money in the market and eventually regret the trades which you have not taken. The second fundamental risk which I did was revenge trading. I always went for sometimes went for revenge and market has taken money from me and need to get it back from it and very soon. But it's like a golden rule, it doesn't happen. You have to respect the market. Sometimes you make losses, then you recover slowly because the market is too big to fight against. There are a lot of other players in the market. So you have to calm down and you just have to respect the market. And the third biggest mistake which I did is, it is like when you have a bad run going in the market, which will happen with every trader, you have to slow down. You have to reduce your size, you have to reduce your pain. And as in when your confidence comes back, is when you start getting back in the market in a big way. So those are the some risks and advices on it. Okay, that's all for this video. I think this will be enough for our audience to understand the options trading. I'm very thankful to you for joining us on YouTube today. And thank you Thank so you for much. having me, Kritesh. And Thanks if so our much. audience enjoyed our talk and they would like to hear more about options trading, hit a like button and also comment the things that you didn't understood about this video. We will try to cover it more in our future videos. So that's all. Thank you, Kritesh. See you next time. Thank you time. so much, Kritesh.